where they separated Edinburgh from McCannagy, which is a different place. And so they're attracting people over, and from what was going to be the new town. And this bridge goes across the northern dam. And it's the only bridge that goes across the northern dam. And this bridge goes across the northern dam. On the left, you're looking down to the railway lines across to the west. And on your right, you get the great view right across to East Lothian. And you can see the Pockenzie Power Station. This is over to Hollywood Park and up to the Carlton Hill. Right up to a telescope of memorial to Horatio Nelson. So, gentlemen, if I could please sit down, thank you. So that's Rob, and you're looking at this fascinated building, all that's left of the Carlton Jail. That was the house of the governor. You've got the old Carlton burial ground. It's an interesting burial ground. There's a statue of Abraham Lincoln in there. The first statue of Lincoln erected outside the U.S. Army commemorates the guys who died in uh, the American Civil War. And ahead of us, we've got uh, Register House. That's where you can trace your family ancestry. It's a Robert Adam building. So stunning. And the statue is the statue of the Duke of Wellington sitting on his favourite horse, called Ken Hagen. Often called the statue of the three metals, the Iron Duke in bronze by steel. So on your left, this is the way you got down to last frosty day. It was made a lot easier when we built a bridge to span the valley that lies between where we are now and the Cotton Hill ahead. <coughs> we have an open arch of the bridge ahead of us, left and right, so we are on the bridge. And then you're going to go through the old Carlton burial ground. We have to pick up the middle section. We're going to go through the burial ground. We're 12 feet beneath the graves on either side. Part you can go into is on the right. And if you look to the right, you see a circular building. That's the tomb of David Jew. And just before it is the statue of Abraham Lincoln. First statue of Lincoln erected outside the U.S. That's the memorial to principal martyrs of 1793, five men whose crime it was. They wanted to reform the electoral system so more people could vote. They were arrested and found guilty of sedition. They were tried by Lord Bratsfield. One of the guys said, you know, Jesus Christ was a seditionist. He was a radical believer. And Lord Bratsfield said, I, and look what happened to him. You're just going to be sent away to prison. So, off we go. Lord Bradshaw, a rather strange man. There's Lord Bradshaw, a lot of strange tales to about him. On your right, St Andrew's House, international modern in style, uh, used by the Scottish Executive. And on the left, uh, we have sticking his head above the cliff of the right angle bed, the Salisbury Crags. There's the memorial to Bunce. Arthur Seat, Salisbury Clares, all part of Lady Five miles in circumference, completely at that time. It wasn't a pleasant place to live, and he wanted to build a palace suitable for a princess. Down at the bottom of the hill, there hadn't been much. There had been a hospital. Uh, the, ho the monks of Holyrood Abbey had a wee hospital down there, but there was nothing much else. And the park that we see now was still there, so you had this area of green that would really be suitable for a young. Girl. His granddaughter, Mary Queen of Scots, when she came to Scotland, was never happy in Scotland, but she was happy with Hollywood Park. She liked right a strange smell. She was too polite to say it stinks. She had a brewery right outside her house, and she also had a gasworks on the right. And this building on the left is 16th century. It's called Mary Queen of Scots Bathhouse, but it was surrounded by working class tenements up to eight stories high. And when I say there were tenements, there were single rooms with more indoor sanitation in which the poorest of the poor lived. On your right, uh, the Catalan gentleman, Enrique Morales, and to your left, the oldest part of the palace, built in the reign of James IV, and to the left of it is Holyrood Abbey, built in 1128. The Queen's Gallery has works of art from the Royal Collection. At the moment, it's only photographs of the Middle East. And here in us, we've got bicycle racks belong to Parliament. If you look at them in the right way, they've taken the semblance of bicycles, as long as there's no bicycles in them, and see them from the back as well. And on your left, you have uh, the newer part of the, par the palace, built in the 17th century. These are where the Queen's private apartments are. The blinds are well and truly down. And to your left, the gardens. Queen Victoria didn't like being walled in, 
So there's a wall outside and a fence, but inside the garden slopes up to the and we have Hollywood Park, five miles in circumference, completely wild countryside, three lofts, Dudleyson, Dunsaki, and just outside the Palace St. Margaret's. If you look across the road, you see the staircase. It goes up to the Radical Road. The Radical Road was on the west coast. They were arrested. The authorities weren't sure what to do with them. It was Sir Walter Scott who suggested they could build a park. He said that will keep that money off politics. Very popular today. On the right, you look at the old Road for the Road Brewery, or part of it, the other part of it is where the Parliament is now. It's castellated here, this is because of Queen Victoria, who said, you're not building a brewery, it looks like a brewery next to my home, you have to make it look like I can put bounds, I was with the economist, who was Stuart, David Hume, the philosopher, James Burnett, the linguistics, and uh, Blackstock, another poet, and Burns, a poet. So there's, uh, and nobody can understand it, and they believe it's maybe because Edinburgh consists of the one street, and all the, uh, all the stuff we had, the cliffs and all sorts of things. And if, if you're a geologist, this is a great place to wander around. It's a heaven for geologists. Here on the left, you get the look at the Scottish Parliament building. Architect, the Catalan gentleman, Enrique Morales, died two years into the building of it. And beyond that, a good view of the Colt Hill for all its buildings. Ahead of us coming back to the palace. These trees, I believe the Queen requested the trees to soften the view of the Parliament building. I don't think it was the Parliament building she wanted to soften. She wanted to soften the view of people sunbathing about 200 yards from a hall and children and people and dogs in the water, which isn't meant for paddling in. They're all uh, bomb, bomb proofing the building. We're certainly having a great time today. Dogs, children, other people here. Is that a dog that doesn't like water? I used to have a little Jack Russell that hated water. Wouldn't they go near it? On down to the railway line. The railway came in 1830, upset the residents of Princess Street, who didn't want their view spot. And that's why the railway station is out there now. Once upon a time, down when you see the cars and the railway station, you had cattle grazing and women doing their shopping. Around at, at the Carlton Rock, we had a little village. And looking across, you can see the open arch of the bridge that spans the valley between Princess Street and the Carlton Hill. So we have two bridges spanning one valley, one bridge at right angles to the other. The bridge we're looking at was built in 1899, replaced the bridge that had been built in 1766. The 1766 bridges, arches, were too small for the train. This is where, when we built the first bridge here, the markets came down here because they were protected from the elements. On your left, the staircase that will take you right up to the Georgia Park Bridge. Flesh market. Those fleshes were butchers. This is where the butchers had their market. That leads up to the Royal Mile. City Art Centre. And on your right, the fruit market gallery. It's uh, always free, the fruit market. It used to be the fruit market, actually. And to your left, what happens when a lot of the buildings fall down? You're looking up to the Royal Mile. To your left, now it's close to Edwards. Luckily, it's two feet wide. And ahead of us, we've got a street. Cut through the old town, about 1840. And people from the old town had to get to the railway. The only way they could do it was going all the way down the Royal Mile. So by 1850s they had enough of it, and they built this road on your left. Six places were partially knocked down to build it. This is Coburn Street. That will take you up to the Royal Mile. And up to the Royal Mile is where you'll find the nearest fish and chip shop to Princess Street. It's called the Clamshell, and it's between the Tron, Kirk, and St. Thomas. You can buy it in paper or up to the left, you can down to the railway lines, they go right underneath the National Gallery of Scotland, straight through the gardens, underneath St. Cuthbert's Churchyard, coming out at what is now the Caledonian Hilton Hotel. It used to be the Caledonian Railway Hotel. So here they are, end of this tour, and end of the buses for today, but we'll all be back tomorrow. Okay, so thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.